In this special sneak peek of the fast track to deployment property adjuster certification, I build a composition roof estimate in Xactimate. I'm Matt, and this is Adjuster TV. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Hey, Matt here with Adjuster TV and my favorite student feedback from the Fast Track to Deployment Property Adjuster Certification comes from Jordan and Roger. Jordan says, I can vouch for his class. It was 1000% worth the time and money. I would not be nearly as confident with my abilities and knowledge if Matt wasn't there to teach. And Roger follows up by saying, training is far beyond in details than any I have had from IA firms. Most of them just scratch the surface. The Fast Track to Deployment Certification is honored by Alacrity, Pilot, Crawford, Paysetter, CCMS, and Sedgwick. Enrollment for this unique program is open right now at adjustertv.com slash certified. All right, this is just a tiny fraction of the overall property adjuster training that's included in this program. So enjoy. Now let's do an estimate for a full roof replacement and we're just gonna keep it as simple as possible. So again, we're gonna start off with our first note here, right? So the following line items are to replace the roof on the, the dwelling damaged by hail, something like that, right? But we're also gonna add a note in here to talk about depreciation because as an insurance payments, you know, necessarily when we, we're talking about a full replacement of something, not just a repair where we're taking little pieces of things here and there, or only doing part of something, which is we consider to be a repair. When we do a full replacement, we, do, we replace the whole thing. Like we're gonna replace the whole roof. We're gonna place the whole side of one side of the house. We're gonna place all the siding on the, on the whole house. That's most insurance companies, most policies are gonna have you depreciate. So we'll say depreciation is, and this is, you can make templates and macros on this so you don't have to type it every single time. I'm just doing this for a demonstration. Based on the age and condition of the item being replaced. The roof is, we'll say it's 10 years old, has a 25 year useful lifespan and is in average condition. And then we're gonna show our, our calculation here, basically 10 out of 25 is 40%, right? So 40% depreciation, pretty sure it's 40%. Depreciation withheld, right? You're gonna have explained, somebody's gonna have explained this to the homeowner, what the depreciation is and how this works. So when they get this paperwork and they're looking at it, they're like, oh, okay, this is what he was talking about with the depreciation, right? Just want to make a couple of comments about these notes because this is something that is absolutely critical. And if you're taking the fast track to deployment certification program, you're going to be graded heavily on this. This is one of the key things um, that's going to be on the, the final. Um, what you're trying to do here, when, when you're thinking about these notes, it's not like, a, well, it's just required or Matt says I got to do it. What you're trying to do is you're trying to communicate uh, with the homeowner in the simplest, fastest, clearest way possible, right? What, a, what a, so, so when they're looking at, instead of a bunch of gobbledygook with line items and like, you know, numbers and calculations and unit price and RCV and all this stuff, they want to see this. What, what are you doing? Where are you doing it? Right? So what am I doing? I'm going to replace the roof. Where am I doing it? On the house, the dwelling. Why? Because of hail. And now we're gonna briefly explain why we're paying in two payments, right? So this is what depreciation basically is. Um, depreciation, this is the definition of depreciation or, or, or how it's calculated um, based on the age and condition, right? So the condition is, is important, right? So we wanna say, so we, we've established what, you know, the the the, how it's calculated now let's see let's explain let's show and explain how that this particular roof this homeowner's particular house how this fits into that definition right so we, we, we define it right here and then we go on and say specifically your roof it's 10 years old um, this particular roof has a 25 year useful lifespan and it is an average condition for a roof of this of a ten year old roof. It looks like it's a ten year old real, a ten year old roof should look right. So we're going to hold back forty percent depreciation until you have the work completed. 
Once the work's done, just you know, send in the final bill from the contractor. We'll send you the rest of the money. Pay that guy off. You're all done, right? That's the conversation you should have had with the homeowner. You can, if you print these out on site or you have your laptop there and you write on site, you can go through that spiel with the homeowner. But in this case, what we're doing here is we're saying the roof is 10 years old, right? That's the age. Um, the shingles, this is how we get the 40%, that has a 25-year useful lifespan, so a three-tab shingle. Um, and then the condition, which is average. There are situations where you're going to make it above or below average condition. You're never going to say uh, anything other than the, those three things, one of those three things. It's either average condition, above average condition, or below average condition. If it's, if it's, and these are gentle ways of saying either your roof is in terrible shape um, or that, you know, the roof is in such good shape that, you know, there should be less depreciation withheld or whatever it is, right? So it might be like, think of a classic car, right? Or a 15-year-old car could be in above average condition because the paint's brand new, the upholstery looks nice, it sounds good when it runs, right? So that'd be an above average condition. So it would be worth, it, it wouldn't be depreciated as much, if that makes sense, right? So, but this is all we want to say in this note. I don't want to, I don't want to say, you know, add a bunch of things on here like, uh, it's depreciating at 6.67% a year, you know, or add in a bunch of extra things that are not relevant, that are, that are not adding to the understanding of the home, that the homeowner is going to have of what you're doing here. All they need to know is, what is what are you doing with depreciation? How does my roof fit into this? And what's the number? That's it, right? And then, of course, what are these line items? We're replacing the roof, where on the house, why, damaged by hail, Okay. It's for, for the vast majority of your F9 notes, that's all you need to put in there. In fact, that should be all you need to put in there for every single one of these line items I'm about to drop in here, so, right? So we want to tear off the roof, right? So roofing, arm V, tear off haul and dispose of comp shingles. You're not gonna put dumpsters, pickup trucks, or dump trucks on any roofing thing because you're gonna, the, the, the disposal, the haul off is included, right? And we're just gonna like make up a, measurements here, right? So the tear off, the actual, it's a 24 square roof, right? It's all labor, okay? And that includes tearing off the vents, tearing off the ridge cap, tearing off the starter strip, you know, tearing the um, valley out of there and everything, okay? Contrary to what the internet may say, that is the way it has always been and it's the way it should always be, probably, right? So roofing, it's a 25-year shingle, so that's 240S. We don't want to include felt on there because we're going to do something different with it. Um, and we want to make the action replace only, right? So we tore off the felt and the shingles. This should include felt. Let me double check that, stand by. Yeah, remove composition shingles and felt, okay? so. Double check that if you're, if you're if in doubt, if you have a little brain fart like I just did. So the roof is actually 24 squares. We're gonna say it's a straight gable, right? We'll keep it super duper simple. The easiest way to, to do this, to add, because you wanna add waste to this, this is why we're separating the felt out. Um, you don't apply waste to felt, right? So um, what I usually do is 24, you know, and hold down shift and hit the eight key for the amp or the asterisk. Um, which is the multiplication, right? So 24 times 1.1, so 10%. Okay, makes sense? And then 26.67, I wonder if that rounded that up for me. Yeah, it probably did. Okay, now I need to put the felt in there. So roofing, felt, 15, which the vast majority of roofing applications actually for anything over 10 years old, maybe even not quite 10 years old, maybe five to ten, seven, eight, 10, nine, 10 years old, they're going to be, is anything older than that's going to be a 15 pound felt. Anything newer than that's probably going to be synthetic. But for this, for this particular thing, we're going to say it's felt, right? So we have the actual 24, uh, 24 squares of felt on there, right? So we tear off the shingles and the felt, the actual 
squares that exist on the house. This is the actual square footage of the roof, right? 2,400 square feet, but roofing is expressed in squares, which is, you know, move the decimal point over a couple spots. And then we're gonna go back on with the shingles, but we have to add waste to the shingles because of, you know, the edges and valleys and things like that, right? And we don't include felt in there because felt is not subject to waste. There's no waste on felt, okay? That's a basic rough estimate, like as, as basic as you can get. 10,350 bucks for a 24 square three tab roof is crazy. <laughs> That's so high. Well, this is also Kalispell pricing, so this is, things are high here. Okay, but we're not quite done because there's other things on the roof that need to go on there, right? So we, we definitely want to put vents back on. Um, there's little trim and flashing pieces and things like that that we need to take into consideration. So the next thing that should go into your estimate here are going to be your vents, right? So we'll say that there's six turtle vents, vent T in their metal, right? And we're going to tab over to ACT, which is action. And that says, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and just hit the plus um, button. And it's automatically going to change that for me. And you can tap, you can arrow through those. You can click right here. And, you know, old school, if, if you're kind of old school person and you just like to click everything, um, I'm going to tab through these fields as much as possible, right? You can tab through everything and you can change everything by just starting to type, right? So you had six vents, right? And if I want to change the, from the dwelling to other structures, I can make sure that this little thing is highlighted and arrow up and down, right? Those are little shortcuts for you. So we got some vents. We have some uh, pipe jacks, FL pipe plus. These again, these are plus. And let's say that there's three of those. I've seen houses that have 15 and 20 of those on one, like not very big house, which I don't know how that works, but they must be vents for other things. Um, and then we'll have drip edge, drip. And we're going to make sure that that is also replace only, right? So the plus means replace, minus means remove, ampersand means remove and replace, material only, install only, which you, you don't use that often, which you occasionally. So you're going to have to have added this up unless you get an eagle view or whatever, or you've got a sketch in there and it does it for you. We added it up and it's going to be 316 linear feet, right? That's, that's a pretty basic roof right there. We'll say it's not steep, um, it's not high, so we don't need to add that stuff on there. It doesn't have any other you know, ridge vent um, or high profile ridge or anything like that. Um, but you know what, it does, you know, we're looking at, I'm looking back down at my sketch here and I see, oh, well, it looks like it has a um, satellite dish on there that the, the contractor, the installers are gonna have to address. They can't just like put the shingles on around it. Thankfully, there is ELS, Special Systems, Dish, RRS, R, yeah, Dish RS, that's it. Um, detach and Reset Satellite, Digital Satellite System. Excludes receiver recalibration, all that kind of stuff. Detach and Reset, a Satellite Dish, Restall on Site, Detach Satellite, Digital Satellite Dish, Reinstall at a later time, Etc. No life expectancy data. So they, the contractor sometimes would try to throw in like a receiver recalibration, dish alignment, that kind of thing. That's something that dish is going to do or um, uh, whatever. I can't remember the name of the other. Whoever does satellite TV stuff, um, those are the ones who do the, uh, the the recalibration. The homeowner might do it. If you've got like a Elon Musk Starlink thing, that thing, it, it calibrates itself. It's got motor in it. it I have got one. It, I just I hit the calibrate button and it, I could hear it up there on the roof going zzzz, and it, does, it did it on its own. So you don't need to add a recalibration. So there's your, there's your roof. Now notice we didn't put any um, dumpster on there, but we're missing depreciation. All right, so what did we say? In our note, we said we had um, depreciation of 10 year old roof, it's 40 years, 40% 40 depreciation, right? The fastest way to do this is, why did I go all the way down there? The fastest way to do this is to select the first one and the last line item, click on global changes, and then you're gonna go to, you can change all kinds of things in here, by the way. You're gonna go to depreciation 
And you can do this one of two ways. You can go by percent. So we could just say it's 40%, right? Hit OK. OK. And then it's going to show all this depreciation over here. The other way is we could, and it's really six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. It might change the depreciation a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be by a whole lot. We can depreciate by age and condition in here. You have to click this do not change age checkbox for some reason. I don't know why that's there. And say that it's 10 years old. Do not change the condition. It's going to default to average, right? Depreciation type, do not change. We want it to be recoverable. Hit OK. Let's see what it does. So 3,436, 210. Let's see what it does. 3,545, 150. So I changed it a little bit. I think when it's all said and done, the bottom line number is going to be about the same. $12,000 roof. Okay. So the next thing that we do here, this is, and that's it. That's really all you need to put in your, your rough estimate, um, unless there's extra added things. And this is, this is the basic roof again. I'm going to go to documents, reports, definitely need to resequence the line num numbers, preview, and take a look at this sucker. So I'm making sure in here I'm looking at this. I got everything spelled right. It looks grammatically correct for the most part. Um, sometimes if you have a macro, um, and I can show you this, I'll show you this here in just a second, you might have like um, the roof is, and I'll put in my macro a bunch of X's right there so that I can see it and I know to change it. If I forget to do that, then it'll show up in here as a bunch of X's. Um, I want to make sure that depreciation here I, that I'm showing that I'm taking depreciation and I'm also showing I'm taking depreciation here as well, right? Nothing else weird is going on. I'm just double checking my work, right? Still don't have my de deductible in there. Let's add a deductible real quick. Coverages and loss, deductible, $1,000, right? So I might have in my uh, macro, it might say, this is what I was talking about a second ago, I might say this. Because those are big targets, I can just like jump in here and just double click that and go 10, right? And then cl double click this and go 40 and then hit close. And then I'm done, right? So that way I can always have a, a custom note. Most of the typing is done. Real quick, before we move on, I want to show you a little trick. Um, when you do have a sketch, delete all this, right? My dwelling is here, right? So you can add line items to your roof. This is the, I just drew, it's just the fastest possible, just basic roof here, right? You can start adding your line items onto your roof here, right? You can hit start typing in things like, you know, felt, and it'll give you a bunch of felt things and you can like drag those and put them on the roof. I still think the fastest way and the safest way to do this because if you don't do it, what, what can happen, let's just put it this way. What can happen is, is that sometimes you can place a line item outside of the actual building itself and it'll sh it won't show up under the roof. It'll show up under its own thing in the grouping tree and it looks weird and it kind of messes things up and makes things confusing. I don't want to have to mess around with that happening, having to undo it, fix it, go back, delete, redo, blah, blah, blah. So I'm always going to, whenever I have a sketch um, in Xactimate, I'm going to be writing my estimate from the estimate items uh, area in Xactimate. I think it makes it the simplest and the safest, right? So again, got that first note, right? Following line items, etc. Okay. I'm going to build a macro. Or you know what? Let's, let me delete that. Actually, I have macros made already that are designed to be dropped right onto your dwelling, right onto your sketch. Okay. So I want to hit Cont Control M, and it's going to bring up my all my macros that I have in here currently, and I'm going to start typing 240 because that's the one I want. 
which is I, I named my 25 year comp shingle macro 240. Make it super easy. Double click it. And it's going to drop in all these line items, right? The cool thing is, is that I made this macro so that in the calculation field, it puts in a sort of a shortcut, right? So you see right there, it says SQ times 1.15, right? That's the number of squares that are, that are on this sketch times 15%. You know, adding 15% back to itself, right? So I don't have to do anything with that. Tear off, don't have to do anything because it's, it's the squares, right? Drip edge, don't have to do anything with that because it's the rakes and the eaves, right? The rakes and the eaves are the, um, the, 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 where the gutter attaches is the eave edge and where the fascia on the, like a, well, there's fascia on the eave edges, there's fascia on both, but on the, the ends that were the, the rakes were the, 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 basically what goes along with the rafter, that's the rake, right? So now this is the rake plus E for that whole diagram, okay? Um, and it goes for several other things in here, including um, continuous ridge vent, um, ridge cap, um, steep and high, um, and then valleys, right? So in valley metal is gonna be, th the shortcut for that is VAL. So there should be zero valleys on this one, and there are, all right? So all you do when you get a macro like this and you're like, just dropping your macro on, all right, I know that none of this stuff is on here. Up to there, that's none of that's there, all right? Definitely has none of that, none of that. The earth touch hurdle vents are metal, there's no ice and water, it's only drip edge, and delete those. And there's my estimate, right? And all I really have to do from here is to say, all right, there were six turtle vents and there were three pipe jack boots. Now I'm done. That's it. That's all I got to do, right? So that's that's a pretty cool little shortcut right there for those sorts of things, and it's in macros. And those macros, you can find those macros under the Xactimate X1 complete estimate walkthrough video that's in inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. And again, I I still think macros are probably the fastest way to write estimates, pretty much bar none. And that is how you do a basic roof replacement. Have you ever wished there was an adjuster program out there that would just give you a chance to prove yourself to the big IA firms? I mean, most IA firms won't give claims to adjusters with zero experience. But how do you get experience if nobody will give you a chance? Matt here with Adjuster TV, and you know what? I got you. I'm stoked to tell you all about my newest adjuster program called the Fast Track to Deployment Certification. Yes, you heard that right. A certification. You've been asking me for years if I had a certification or if I could mentor you in some way that would get you special priority onboarding and deployments from major IA firms. Well, this summer we finally did it and we're reopening enrollment for a limited time to a limited number of students. By the end of this program, you will have a framework for building and executing your schedule as a new adjuster, a system for closing claims quickly in that schedule, a systematic plan for inspecting, estimating, and correctly documenting losses, the mindset for handling a catastrophe property deployment, an understanding of task prioritization so that you know exactly what to do and when to do it, no more emergencies, panic, or freakouts, a blueprint for stellar customer service that will have IA firms begging you to work for them, a tried and true technique for doing your own file review before you send your claims up so that you can cut down on kickbacks, exclusive training on how to build estimates for the most common construction and estimating scenarios that you're going to encounter as an adjuster. I mean, you name it, I'm gonna cover it. Everything from roof repairs and replacements, siding, windows, decks, sheds, fences, drywall, all kinds of flooring, cabinets and vanities, and so on. You'll have lifetime access to these trainings so you can refer to them at any time. And last, but certainly not least, you'll have been tested by me on all of these skills and knowledge. Here's your chance to prove yourself to the firms and get moved to the front of the line. This training will be conducted live over the internet and replays will be available to you after each session if you can't make it live. Also, every module has required homework so you can make sure that you're getting these concepts nailed. And not only that, but you'll get these bonuses to help keep you at the top of your game on your first or next storm deployment. Complete checklists and calendars for routing and scheduling your claims, Xactimate macros and templates, as well as scripts for contacting insureds, 
contractors and other people in the claims process, weekly live group Q&A support to help you get ready to pass and be certified, continued support post-graduation to help you through the rough spots and answer questions when you do get deployed. We call it phone a friend three free months of Adjuster TV Plus for further training on scoping, estimating policy, and more. Because the sessions are live, you'll get direct access to me live in every session, and you're going to get this all at a very nice price that will never be lower again. So if you're all in on becoming a working cat property adjuster, then your next step is to prove it to our partner firms, which includes Pilot, Paysetter, Alacrity, Sedgwick, Crawford, and CCMS and Associates and get certified by Adjuster TV, the most trusted name in claims.